Hey, so today has been very interesting. Um, honestly, like this whole year has been interesting. Mind you, like it's 2021. We have been going through a pandemic. We've been going through all these different things. And, you know, I thought that the lowest low had to have been last year. And, you know, it was a low low for a lot of people, right? So for me, uh, if you followed the whole journey, right? Like 2020 was supposed to be the year, supposed to do conventions, supposed to be all those different things. And it didn't happen. Uh, COVID, you know, just things fell through. And from there, I, I've lost my job. I lost a whole bunch of different things that, you know, everybody else did, right? But uh, I think that it really allowed me to really see what I can do uh, starting from the ground up, overcoming adversity. Like that, that's sort of been the MO for me. And so what I did was I said, okay, I see there's an opportunity for AR. I have time. I want to learn Blender. I want to do all these different things. And then, you know, obviously being black and being a creator and wanting to get my voice out there and, and talk about the things that, you know, I just didn't see out there in the world. I decided to create it. And, and you know, that generated a lot of attention over the past four or five months, literally four or five months. And, you know, I did the Unity for Humanities thing. I did the, um, you know, Augmented Road Expo talk on social impact. I did all these things and I was just like, OK, you know, I'm not really... I don't feel like I'm doing anything life changing or crazy. Uh, I just feel like I'm just approaching it differently. And, um, you know, as a creator in the AR space in particular, I saw that there was just a void in representation. I saw that there's a void in just so many different things. And so, kid you not, I wake up one morning and I see an email hit my hit my inbox from from uh, Unity and they're like, hey, you know, the Wall Street Journal reached out to me and they wanted to see if you'll be interested in being a part of the F Wall Street Journal Future of Everything Festival. And I was like, Wall Street Journal Future of Everything Festival? Like, I know what the Wall Street Journal is, but I don't know what the Future of Everything is. And so I did a little bit of research and I was like, whoa, what? Like, this is wild, right? And so they wanted to, they want me to talk about uh, essentially social impact. And, and what that means and, and how emerging technology can be used for activism, for uh, environmental activism, racial justice, uh, increased access points, all those different things. And I, I think that, you know, it's just wild just sort of seeing it. And then more importantly, literally going through and actually seeing what that looks like when it's actually announced. So, you know, we're on this website here, right? Like Wall Street Journal, Future of Everything Festival. I mean, that's like a, it's it's the Wall Street Journal. Like, what can I say about that, right? Like, this is freaking, this is freaking crazy. And so I'm going through and I'm like, okay, you can register for it. You know, let's see how much it costs to register for it. It's like, okay, boom, United States, cool. Oh man, you know, you gotta pay. Ah, oh, it's actually not too bad. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a legit festival thing. And so from there, you know, going back to their website, we, we got themes and it's like, boom, 2021 speakers. You got Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade, freaking Barry Jenkins, Rachel Ray. Like what? You know, they do that. Oh, you know, CEO of MasterCard, freaking Paris Hilton. And so when we go to all the rest of the speakers, you know, we, we see the we see the highlights. You know, we, we got the Barnes and Noble guy, all that stuff. You know, Tommy Adiemi, like, love her work. Freaking, <laughs> like, this is, this is crazy. And then what do you know? There's me right there. You know, like, this is, like, looking at the, like, looking at all of these people here that are involved in it. And then seeing me just, like, smack dab in the middle of it, like I belong there. It, it's, it's, it's pretty surreal, right? And, and so if you look at what this is about, like the Wall Street Journal Future of Everything Festival is really just, you know, who who are the ones that are paving the way for uh, change in certain areas, industry disruptors. Um, and the way things have been going for me in the in the space, right? Like it's it's been crazy. And I feel like they haven't been around for very long. But one of the things that stood out to me as I'm going through like the website and everything is that when we're looking at themes and they're talking about AI and activism and stuff like that, yes, you know, there's health and humanities, 
there's technology and I really think you know speaking to that technology piece of you know what is the impact of all these different technologies within our world and how can it make it better and so for me you know the things that I've the things that I've really focused on was representation and using AR emerging technology to you know address the pitfalls that Silicon Valley in the in the 20 you know the 2000s sort of uh, negatively affected black people you know me being from the Bay Area me seeing how you know the tech boom was going and so and you know as a result my family members and, and me and everybody were being pushed out of the Bay Area and uh, and pushed into Vacaville and Sacramento and all these different areas and it, it just really I saw so much of my past happening in the future that I wanted to change what I was going to see in the future and I learned that you know for me going down the route of football I grew up with five six seven people that played in the NFL that are my age that we all went to high school together and stuff but I didn't know anybody that was going into coding or development or anything like that and so I understood that the things that were done to take me down this path are the things that could be done in other areas to help pave the way for other people because it's like you get one guy in then now you get two three guys in then you get three four guys in like it, it's you know that that's how the league worked you know and that's what we sort of perpetuated and so god forbid you know one person gets into ar and then three people get into ar and then before you know it we got a whole camp of, of people you know working in emerging technology they're musicians they're doing all these different things and and i always like look back at where all of this sort of started right like i was stuck and i didn't know what to do i saw there's an opportunity for ar with comic books and i did demos and stuff early in in 20 in uh 2020 that allowed me to you know test the market and see like what what is actually how people respond to it and you know unsurprisingly like they responded to it in a great way and that encouraged me to further pursue it in in many ways honestly and so what what i did then and as i was like dude you know like with covid and everything like all you need is unity all you need is a freaking like computer and you can just download stuff you don't even know how to 3d model all the you literally point and click and then download some stuff and put stuff together you just need a vision and i know many people many of black people that have visions and those visions have been squashed because people told them no and they said you can't access this because of who you are or where you're from and so i was like okay let me just let me just flip that on its head right all the stuff that people are paying thousands of dollars for to learn this stuff i'm just put it out on youtube for free you know and i'm and i'll put myself here freaking afro black people you know and being unapologetic about it and then just so happened you know like all this stuff was uh you know police brutality which is still happening right like all this stuff is still happening like it was last year but you know with the pandemic and police brutality and all those things at the forefront i was like what can i do to you know have people explore ar and then also be culturally relevant you know you're not just doing ar for ar sake right you're doing it for a purpose you know it's supposed to solve something it's supposed to communicate something you're supposed to provide an experience that you can't do anywhere else and with covid and ar that made so much more sense and so i did the i did the portland project right um where i did a 30-foot monument of george floyd in you know all over the place in, in portland and i was able to be discreet about it i was able to uh, scale it i was able to move it and do all those different things without having to worry about permits, without having to worry about any of that stuff. And then not only that, but I showed people how to do it just and made it open source. Like it's, this is like a byproduct of the internet and why uh, access to the internet has democratized so many different things. And so it's like, you know, because of that, you know, people can access these things. All you gotta do is just get a computer, right? Like everybody has a computer. And at this point, like everybody's gonna have freaking LiDAR phones and all those different things that are capable of doing AR stuff already. And so my mind was just like, okay, if, if people were, people had the, have the tools and they have the ideas, you know, there's a, there's a void, there's a gap there. And so what I just decided to do was just like say, Hey, you know, that void or that gap is what they'll put a paywall in to make that connection. 
you know, I I have no stake in this anyway. I'm trying to get into medical school, right? So for me, I'll just like I'll just bridge the gap there. And 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 that's what I did. And you know, from there, that's why I'm freaking doing the thing with the the future of everything festival because for me, like this is all this is all about making an impact. Like I'm not making any money off of this stuff. Like I just do the YouTube videos because this is cool, right? Like I podcast because this is I want to see more of this stuff out there and because there isn't anything out there and so you know if if i'm able to make a living off of it eventually cool okay but you know like this is like you know as an artist you do so much stuff for free and as a black artist as a black creator as a black creative you do so much stuff for free that you have to find other ways outside of monetary value to uh, to continue doing this work and so for me, I don't want to, you know, five, 10 years from now when AR is worth $20 billion, right? Like when AR is worth $200 billion, I don't want to see another article about where's all the black people in XR, AR, VR, you know, like where's all the black people in these spaces because black people were using it. Black people, you know, just didn't have access to the tools to create in it or It'll be like in the animation or the or the game development scene right now where, you know, many of black people love animation, but they're just now getting to like create in it, you know, whereas in video games, like many black people love playing video games and they want to learn how to play video games if they could right now. Like they don't even think it's even possible, right? You don't even know where to start. And so with with this, it's just like, you know, I I want to have an impact in you know, making it accessible and making it relevant for black people, much like it was with football for me. You know, football didn't work out for me the way I wanted it to, but I was able to make it to a point where I played in college, right? Like I played against future Hall of Famers. I got coached by future Hall of Famers. Like I, just, you know, like that was the scene that I was in and I was doing well and I was, I was, I was doing it. And then the realities of, you know, trying to trade opportunities for your body just doesn't work. It just doesn't work you know and you know it's 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 another conversation but but the the thing that i you know the enlightening thing about this is that you know for for so long i've been trying to find a way to rewrite the narrative that i you know my value was just as a football player and you know the opportunities that came for me were just because of football and in many ways like that was true that was true because it you know got me into college got me to travel got me to do all these different things and so it made sense that you know that sort of that defined me in a way and when i retired when i finished playing i i've been down this journey trying to rewrite what that is you know redefine like who i am as a person and i think 2021 has shown that this sort of journey to rewrite who i am as a person is um it's it's definitely you know it's definitely something that i i appreciate going through because you know right now i'm i'm not the i'm not the former football player anymore you know i am the i'm the black ar guy right like this is this is the this is the thing that i set out to do last year is you know so much stuff is happening and there's so much potential out there because of the current situation and the value that AR has, has, you know, people are just seeing a lot more value in it because of COVID, literally because of COVID, people see that like AR is an avenue that literally was not there before. Kid you not, I, pre-COVID, right when I, oh, right when I released the Island Fever app, I went and, you know, met with people to try to get a job to do this stuff like for them. And they played around with the app and after they played around with it, they were like, hey, we like this this is cool but we don't know if we can you don't know if you can handle projects and i'm like dude what i just built an ar app you know designed it did all the animation did all that stuff that you see and you can't you can't see a vision for me like doing this stuff and so for me it was like like ar and stuff like nobody saw any value in it like it wasn't a thing and then freaking three four months later i drop a demo on something that I was supposed to raise money for, didn't raise any money for, but it put me on the map for all the other opportunities that come around with it. You know, teaching, freaking teaching 
at a community college now like all this stuff is wild and it, it's you know yes i that that connection to football and, and being able to uh be more appealing that works and I, I really appreciate that but now it's like dude like things are things are wild like things are wild and and it's only getting wilder like could you not like every time i wake up something else is going to happen and you know it's i'm just i at this point i'm just trying to process the things that happened two weeks ago three weeks ago a month ago and then there will be something that will happen tomorrow yesterday the day before that that just is still life-changing and so for me yeah like i'll be on the future of everything festival and you know it, it's a i think that's just a it's just a wild situation to be in because this isn't something that i like imagine happening like you you think like oh yeah you know this could blow but like when it actually starts happening it, it's it's wild like it, it's it's just like kind of hard to process like i i don't have to like go on instagram to try to get little projects to pay pay rent anymore like this is this is a it's you know it, it's 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 really humbling and you know for me it, it's it's just a breath of fresh air to feel like i am doing something that is that is worth attention and and worth all the things that you know like we all sort of aspire to be like we you're going down this route and many a times trying to play with blender where i'm just like dang i don't know if this is even like worth my time you know late nights just trying to figure out how to code and how to debug these things so that you can make a youtube video or make a, a video on twitter to share it um and these are all just sort of perspective ideas that uh people often i was just asking for permission for and then at some point i just said man just screw everybody like i'm gonna just do this and see what happens and if it's if it's fun and enjoyable i'll continue doing it and you know to see how see how that like decision has impacted just what's happening right now it, it's you know i just i just i i'm just grateful you know i'm just really grateful and so uh appreciate you all just all the support everybody um <laughs> you know like yeah it just it just feels great so uh obviously you know if you want to if you want to check out my stuff check out more stuff go to uh stuck on an island uh if you want to get any of the work that i create and produce uh hit up the iltopia studios website uh shop.iltopia.com if you want to sort support me on patreon uh patreon.com slash iltopia uh you know, check out Black Superheroes Matter, check out PDX Black Rose, uh, tap in with the community. Uh, this is, you know, it's look out for the future of everything festival. Uh, it's it's great. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate you all. So without further ado, I've hey, you know, look out, look out for me on the social nets. And uh, and I, you know, I yeah, I just want to I just feel appreciative to uh, continue this work. And so, thank you. Yo, 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 this is Steve from Stuck on an Island. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. Follow me on all the social nets. Be sure to check out my studio, Iltopia, on all the other platforms. And if you want to get some merch, check out shop.iltopia.com.